Hey everybody, this is Russell Metro Game Core. This is the GBD Win Mini, and it's pretty unique. It's basically a very small laptop or a large clamshell device, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, my goal in this video is to just test it out and see what it's like in a real world use case and whether or not it's going to be a good fit for you. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, let's get started with these specs. Now, in terms of CPU, this has two different options, the Ryzen 7640U or the 7840U. And the device that I'll be reviewing today is a higher spec model. It has the 7840U chip inside. In terms of RAM, we have options all the way between 16 and 64 gigs, but all sticks will be LPDDR5 and with 6400 mega transfers per second. We also have some choice when it comes to storage between 512 gigs and up to two terabytes. And it's using an M.2 2230 stick, so the exact same that you can find in devices like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. Now, one thing that is unique about the Win Mini is that it has a 120 hertz panel and it's got an impressively large display for the size of the device. It's seven inches with a resolution of 1080p. That's one of those benefits you get from using a clamshell like this. And despite being a relatively small handheld, we've got a pretty big battery. It's 44.24 watt hour, so over 10% larger than the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. And it also comes in a lower weight than those as well at 525 grams. In terms of connectivity, it's pretty standard. We have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and the operating system is Windows 11 Home. And finally, we have a couple other features worth mentioning, including an OcuLink port, as well as USB 4 and a micro SD card slot. The Win Mini is up for pre-order right now, and they're expecting to start shipping it out about a month from now as of making this video. And in terms of pricing, the lowest spec that you can find is going to be for the 7640U with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage and the starting price is $699 and that does include free shipping. Now the price will go up quite a bit if you want to have that higher spec machine like the one I'm reviewing today. And the starting price for this is $869 although it does come with a full 32 gigs of RAM. All the same that is a big price jump from other competitors on the market like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. So in all, this is a very expensive handheld PC and definitely a big investment. And once we get to this price point, I always start to think to myself, that there cannot be any sort of compromise when it comes to this device. I feel like that if you're going to spend that much money, you should enjoy every single component of that purchase. And so let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing and start seeing what we get for that price point. Okay, to start, we have an instruction manual inside that includes basically a spec sheet for every single button on the device. Also inside the box, we have a small lanyard cable, and yes, it does have a spot for it on the device. And it also comes with a USB-C charging cable and a 100 watt fast charger. And then finally, it also comes with a USB-C adapter in case you need one of these. Okay, and first impressions of the device itself, man, it is a lot smaller than I was thinking it would be. And this is also the first time I've seen one of their devices in a black metal. Usually they use kind of a glossy gray. And the other thing I noticed is that it immediately picked up my fingerprints. This is something that often will annoy me about some of these darker devices, and unfortunately, there's just no avoiding it here on the Win Mini. Here's a look after about a week of testing, and I've wiped it down many times, but as you can see, after a couple minutes of just handling, it will pick up on those fingerprints. And so I think if anything, I would have preferred the other metal texture that they have on their other devices. That one is less prone to fingerprinting. But on a positive note, I do think the black itself does look pretty sharp and it does give it a unique kind of look. Now, holding this device in my hands kind of feels like a novelty. Like it reminds me more of a Nintendo 3DS than an actual laptop. And honestly, after a couple weeks of testing, I'm still torn on how to describe this. So let's go ahead and start looking at these components, starting with the ones that are actually visible when you have it closed up. And we'll go ahead and start with triggers. Now, these are similar to triggers that we've seen on other GPD devices like the Win 4 and the Win Max 2. They do have a full analog input and quite a bit of travel. However, the design on these triggers has never really been my favorite. They kind of have a pivot feel to them. And so as you press down on them, it feels like your fingers are kind of pressing both down and in. But all the same, this hinge kind of design just feels a little bit cheap to me. Now, taking a look at the shoulder buttons, these are actually pretty nice. They're relatively small and have a micro switch connection, but they're very light to the touch and also quiet, which is exactly how I prefer my shoulders. Now, on each side, we do have a bit of a rubber padding, and I assume these are here to make it a little bit grippier on the sides, and I do appreciate the cushion that they provide. Now, taking a look at the top of the device, we have our Oculink port here on the left, and then also a micro SD card slot, which I use to load up all my PC games. Further down, we have a 3.5mm headphone jack, and then a toggle switch between gamepad and keyboard mode. Next, we have two USB-C ports. One is labeled as USB 4, but the other is not. And to the far right, we have a CMOS reset button in case you screw up your BIOS. And then finally, we have our exhaust vent for the active cooling fan, which you can find on the back. 
Not a lot going on the lid other than the GPD logo, which has been slightly engraved and is also shiny. So let's go ahead and open it up, and first thing I noticed was the strength of the hinge. It definitely feels very sturdy, and it's a little bit tight as well, which means it's probably going to hold its position no matter what. Now, two things I like to check with the clamshells is number one, whether or not I can press the shoulder buttons, and no problem right here. Even at a max angle, I can still reach them no problem. And finally, the other thing I like to check is the max angle. Now, this isn't a full 180 degrees, but it's pretty close, and so I think this is probably ideal. So really, as far as hinges go with the clamshell, I don't think there's more that I could expect. I'm pretty happy with what we have here. Now, looking at the actual front of the device, you can see that we have our keyboard in the bottom and then our controls up here on the top. And the first thing I noticed about the controls is that they finally made them symmetrical. On the WinMax 2, they were actually offset. However, on the Win Mini, as you can see here, we have the analog sticks outboard and then the D-pad and face buttons inside. And for me, it's an ideal setup. Because the device is so small, it's pretty easy to reach any of these buttons. And I like the fact that they're symmetrically placed. Next, I want to talk about the analog sticks. Now, these are the same that you can find on the WinMax 2. In fact, in terms of size, they're the same as what you would find on a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. However, the main difference here is that these are using Hall Sensor sticks. And so in that regard, it's very similar to other handheld devices that use these same sticks, including some of the more recent Ambernic ones. However, one thing to note here is these joysticks are a lot more recessed than in those other devices. And that makes a lot of logical sense given the fact that this is a clamshell, it needs to close the screen. And so as a result, these sticks are laid in quite a bit. And unfortunately, as a result, when playing games that require analog joystick inputs, you know, something like a first-person shooter game, I found that this control scheme is less than ideal. It's just an unnatural kind of feeling, given the fact that most of the control setups that you're probably used to have raised analog sticks. It may have to do with the fact that this is a smaller device, and so it feels a little bit more cramped. But either way, I didn't have a smooth gameplay experience. If anything, it felt a lot like I was flicking the control sticks left and right when I was playing. If we take a closer look at the analog sticks, if we press them fully in one direction, you can see that instead of pivoting to one side, it feels like the tip is just kind of leaning instead. And it's kind of hard to describe, but if we take a look at a larger joystick, like something on the ROG Ally, you can see that when it presses down, not only does it tilt to one side, but the entire stick just kind of shifts on that ball head underneath. And this will be the same for just about any other analog stick that you can find that protrudes out from the case. Here's another example with the Steam Deck. Even other GPD devices like the GPD Win 4 have that exact same setup. And in all of these cases, I enjoy playing these analog stick centric games. For example, the GPD Win 4 is one of my favorite Destiny 2 devices. However, on the GPD Win Mini, by virtue of it being a clamshell device and requiring recessed analog sticks, it is a bit of a compromise. Next, let's move over to the D-pad and face buttons, and these feel great. These are very similar to other GPD devices. They have a soft dome switch connection to them, which makes them feel very tactile and precise. And they also have a very shallow travel and are very tight in their movement. And honestly, I think this is ideal for a clamshell device like this. And when it came to the inputs themselves, you know, playing a precision platformer like Celeste, I found that everything was very accurate feeling. So when I wanted to press a button or move in a direction, it was exactly there when I needed it. And I also found that the position of the D-pad and face buttons were actually pretty comfortable in the fact that they're inset into the device. However, there is more to comfort than just the placement and feel of the buttons themselves. And unfortunately, when it came to ergonomics, I found that this wasn't really ideal. A lot of that just comes from the fact that this device is super flat. After all, it's a very small laptop. And so there's no real grip to speak of on the back here. We will talk about a grip here later in the video, but in its naked form, it does feel very squarish. So I wouldn't go as far as calling it an uncomfortable experience, but I would say it is not ideal just given the fact that we have this form factor to work with. Next, we'll talk about the trackpad, and really there's not a lot to say here. It seems to be accurate to me, and it will detect up to four fingers at once. However, one thing to note here, it doesn't have any sort of physical click. So instead of pressing on it firmly in order to do a mouse click, you're just going to tap on it. Above the keyboard, we have two front-facing speakers. We'll test these in a moment. And then we have a variety of different function buttons, including an L4 and R4 button, and then also Start, Select, and Menu. Looking at the keyboard, the first thing you may notice is our power button right here dead center. And now I think it's time to talk about the keyboard itself. Number one, the keys themselves have a very soft kind of texture to them. And each key does have a little bit of a bump to it, so it's pretty easy to find them as you're navigating around. And also of note, the keyboard is backlit. Now the keys themselves have very shallow travel and kind of have a soft click to them. It reminds me of those slide out keyboards that you would find in some of those older cell phones. Now, admittedly, having access to your full keyboard suite is very helpful. For example, if you need to quickly adjust the volume or the brightness on your panel, it's very easy to do. In addition, it's very handy to have a Windows button in case you need to bring up a menu. 
And because you have a full keyboard within Windows, that means you can use other functions like F11 for a full screen, as well as Alt F4 if you need to close an app. So when it comes to those kind of shortcuts, yeah, it's pretty convenient. However, the typing experience leaves a lot to be desired. I found the most comfortable way for me to use it is just to kind of peck at it with my two index fingers. The keys themselves are just way too small to be able to like put your hands on the home row and actually properly type. And so as a result, when you're inputting something, it's not going to be a very pleasant experience. The way I would describe it is that it's ideally suited for putting in a username or password, and you could probably get a couple emails out here and there. However, if you had to do actual work on this device, you know, like typing up a proposal or something like that, I think you're probably going to hate it. So in that regard, I would say that the keyboard is a nice additional bonus, but not really a key feature with this device. Next, I want to talk about size because I do think this is one of the key features in the fact that it's a clamshell and when closed, it is very small. In fact, it's not that much larger than something like my new Nintendo 2DS XL. So let's go ahead and throw a bunch of systems at it so you can see a comparison against other similar devices. We'll start with the Nintendo Switch Lite as a reference and then also the Nintendo Switch OLED edition. Moving on from there, I want to talk about some handheld PCs. So we'll start with the GPD Win 4. I feature this one a bunch on my channel, I really do love this handheld, and one of my favorite features about it is that it has this slide up screen. So this one also has a readily accessible keyboard, but without that clamshell form factor. Another one worth comparing to is the GPD Win Max 2. This one is a 10 inch laptop style handheld, and really the Win Mini is basically a smaller version of this one. And a comparison with other popular handhelds, here is the ROG Ally. And the surprising thing here is that both of these screens are the exact same size. They're 7 inches and they both have a 120 hertz refresh rate. Next up we have the Steam Deck, also a 7 inch screen but with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio making it a bit taller. And then finally, just because I can, let's go ahead and compare it against an even larger handheld. This one here is the Ioneo Kuhn. This one just arrived in the mail the other day, so this will be the next handheld PC that I review. Either way, as you can see, this one dwarfs the GPD Win Mini. In fact, I think it's a completely different form factor and style altogether. However, the unique thing here is that they're both using the exact same 7840U chip inside. In terms of weight, we're looking at 525 grams, which is pretty lightweight when it comes to handheld PCs. As an example, the GPD Win 4 is 610 grams, the ROG Ally is 617, and the Steam Deck is 676 grams. We'll talk about the Ioneo Kuhn's weight in its actual review because it's a pretty funny talking point. Either way, the size of the GPD Win Mini is absolutely one of its biggest draws. I love the fact that we have a full-on 7840U handheld in such a small size. In fact, even when you open it up, it's still a very small device considering the fact that we have a 7-inch screen. So I think the people that are going to be most attracted to a device like this are going to be those that like something that's really ultra compact. It's almost like the next generational leap of something like those old school phones that had those slide out keyboards. So if anything, I think that the major competitor here will actually be another one of GPD's own devices in the WinMax 2. I'd say that the WinMax 2 is kind of like a netbook, and then the Win Mini is that times two. So it's definitely a niche use case, and I'm pretty sure you know who you are if you are interested in one of these. Now let's talk a little bit about the software suite experience, and it's very similar to other GPD devices that I've reviewed. Essentially, there are two different apps that come preloaded on this version of Windows. And the first one is called Win Controls, and this has two main functions. Now, the first one is to customize the back button, but because this one doesn't have a back button, we're not even going to touch it. But the other part allows you to customize the mouse or keyboard mode. And the way this works is you can map any of the keyboard keys to the control buttons themselves. And so after setting this up, you would go to the top here and then switch it over to the mouse or keyboard mode. This will be really handy for some of those older PC games that didn't have full controller support. So in essence, you can map the keys that you actually are going to use in that game to the controls instead of having to use the keyboard. So that's definitely a nice functionality, but also a little bit niche. Now the next inbuilt app is one that they called Motion Assistant, and this will allow you to adjust the GPU and CPU power profiles, but then also make other adjustments like turning on gyro or setting up some hotkeys. By default, you can see it gives you a TDP range of between 5 and 28 watts, but as I'll discuss later in the video, it does look like the BIOS is going to override that. Either way, if you want to adjust the power profile out of the box, this is the app that they recommend, but you can also use third-party apps. For example, I used one called Handheld Companion. Anyway, I went ahead and installed and set up everything like I usually do, and then I run all of my games from a Steam interface. Now before we get into actual testing, let's go ahead and give a quick sound test.
Overall, I like the fact that we have front firing speakers and the audio is pretty clear. However, I did find that the volume was pretty underwhelming, so you may have to use a third party app to boost the overall signal. And now let's jump into PC game testing. We'll start with the lightweight games and then work our way up. Now for the very lightweight games, you know, something like Celeste, you can play these at a 6 watt TDP. And at this lower wattage, I would expect to get upwards of about four hours of battery life. Now moving on from the very lightweight games to kind of what I would just consider your standard lightweight games, most of these will play at a 10 watt TDP. And the nice thing about these games is that many of them will run at that full 120 frames per second. Now of note, there is no free sync or variable refresh rate on this screen, and so it's one of those where you probably don't want to yo-yo a bunch when it comes to the frame rate. But for the lightweight games that can play up to 120 hertz, it's going to look great. Now as we start moving up to those heavier lightweight games, or what I would consider a middleweight game, many of these will also still run, but probably at about a 13 watt TDP. And one of the things I noticed is that once I got to 13 watts, I definitely felt some warmth in my hands. You have to remember this device is unique in the fact that the controls are laying on top of the CPU. CPU. As a result, it's generating a lot of heat. Generally, you wouldn't feel that because the controls are to the side. But on the GPD Win Mini, the ambient heat definitely is a factor. Now, the review unit that was sent over to me from GPD is not the final retail version. For example, this one does have increased insulation padding. So, for example, with the Fox and ETA Prime, the version they tested did not have that increased insulation. So I do think the ambient heat is better on my device than theirs. However, that being said, GPD has decided to change the overall top metal shell. Instead, they're going to swap it out for a plastic cover in the hopes that that's going to reduce the ambient heat. So I think in combination with the increased insulation they'll be using and the plastic, we're really not sure how much ambient heat we're going to be feeling. So the only thing I can do is really test the product that I have in my hands. And I will say that for me, 13 watts is warm but not uncomfortably so. I think instead my personal max was 15 watt TDP. I found that at a 15 watt TDP I can play steadily for an hour or more. It's certainly warmer than I would like and not something I would want to like play outdoors or in a non-AC environment, but I think if you're playing in a nice cool room, 15 watt TDP is going to be fine. And so this is kind of the heart of the issue right here. At a 15 watt TDP, it's not really pushing the CPU too hard, but all the same, the ambient heat is definitely noticeable. For example, if you look at the stats here on the top left, you can see that the GPU temperature is 63 degrees Celsius. And I would not consider this to be hot by any means. However, there are three hotspots in particular that I found when I'm playing. The first is on each of these edges. You can definitely feel it here, but the majority of the heat actually comes right around the D-pad and the face buttons. And the third place where it gets quite hot is right here underneath the triggers. Generally, this is where you're going to be resting your middle fingers, and so as a result, these fingers will get very hot as well. Now, it's not to the point where I would call it hot, and it's not something that I would say is burning me in any way. Instead, I'd describe it as something that is 100% noticeable and a little distracting. If anything, I would say it reduces the fun of my overall gameplay experience. Now, one of the benefits of kind of limiting yourself to a 15 watt TDP is the fact that you're not pushing the CPU so hard. And logically, as a result, you should get some pretty good battery savings. However, one thing that my friend the Fox noticed in his review video was that this device seems to be more power hungry than other ones. And I found the same thing happened with my device. For example, at a 15 watt TDP, it actually is drawing about 24 watts altogether from the battery. So we're looking at about a 10 watt difference in the total package power coming from the TDP to the actual drain in the battery. What this means is that even though a 15 watt TDP should net us about two and a half hours of gameplay, I found that instead I was getting a little bit under two hours altogether. And I'm not really sure what's going on here, if it's a driver's issue or just a configuration thing. But all the same, I thought it was worth noting that the battery life was not as great as I was hoping. So next, what I want to do is try some more heavyweight games, but staying at that 15 watt TDP cap. Because like I mentioned, this is probably the limit of what I'm going to be comfortable using on this device. And honestly, the saving grace here is that 7840U chipset. I would actually consider it to be a fairly efficient chip at that 15 watt TDP, and so as a result, the performance here is pretty good. For example, God of War on low settings with FSR quality will give you over 40 frames per second, and you can get a pretty consistent 30 frames per second or higher at 1080p low settings with games like Elden Ring. So when it comes down to it, I still think that many AAA titles will be playable at a 15 watt TDP on this device, but you will have to manage your expectations when it comes to resolution and overall graphical quality. Now I think GPD recognizes this is a pretty big issue given the fact that they're changing out the shell, but they've also put one other mitigation into place, and that is that they offer some grips that are custom made for the Win Mini. They also sent these out for review, and essentially what you have to do is screw these directly into the case, but once they're in, they do feel pretty sturdy. They also have a pretty big grip to them in the fact that it feels really nice and chunky. 
And I found that there's two kind of ways to hold it. If you're going to be playing a game that requires a lot of trigger inputs, then you'll put your middle finger on the top of the grip. However, if you're just going to be playing something that's more D-pad centric, you can put all four fingers on the grip and there's plenty of space. Now this might change with the retail units, but I did find that the grips themselves were not quite perfectly made. For example, you can see there's just a tiny bit of a lip here from the front of the case down to the grip. And when you're holding the device, it feels a little bit uncomfortable like it's poking out at you. So I wouldn't go as far as to saying this is a 100% solution in terms of comfort and ergonomics. Now, once I had the grips in place, the first thing I wanted to do was max out the TDP. After all, the max power profile from the factory is 28 watts. And of course, that's the first thing I set it to. However, on this unit that I'm reviewing here, it looks like they've capped out the TDP to 18 watts within the BIOS. I tried a number of different apps, including the one that came with it, and then also Handheld Companion, but unfortunately it would not max out over 18 watts. And this may be something that they did specific to this test unit because they didn't want to have extra ambient heat, but all the same it does kind of neuter your performance unless you are willing to go into the BIOS and try to change that yourself. And again, this is just a review unit, so they may be changing it for the retail one. Either way, the difference between 18 and 15 watts is kind of negligible. And so as a result, it got a little bit hotter, but then also only gave me about three or four frames per second better anyway. So at least in the native configuration that we're working with right here, yeah, 18 watts is the max TDP that they have set up within these settings. And truth be told, I wasn't really a big fan of the grips in the first place. I feel like they added just way too much bulk. I do appreciate the fact that they're more ergonomic, but all the same, the whole point of the Win Mini is to get a device that's super small and kind of crazy. And so I think for my own personal use, despite the fact that it does help with ergonomics, I'm definitely going to be taking off these grips and not using them. Okay, that's really it for PC game testing. Now let's move on to some quick emulation. I'm going to start with just the really high-end system, starting with Wii U and working way up. Really what I want to do here is see what kind of performance we can get at a 15 watt TDP. And so this will kind of help with your expectations in case you are worried about that ambient heat. To start with Nintendo Wii U, absolutely no problem here. Even playing Breath of the Wild upscale to 1080p is going to give us about 30 frames per second. So I think that this entire catalog is going to be fully playable. When it comes to PlayStation 3, 15 watt TDP is actually kind of the sweet spot. And so as a result, most of these PS3 games will probably play at a full speed. Now as you get into the more heavyweight and 3D based games, you'll probably run into some issues, but I would say that more often than not, most of these games will still play pretty well. If anything, you'll run into issues with the really heavyweight games like God of War 3 or Infamous. Now I've tested this chipset a lot before, so I'm really familiar with the kind of performance we can expect, and also at a 15 watt TDP, it's a very good fit for Xbox 360. So in particular, if you're looking to play these style of games, then yeah, this should work out pretty well. Even some of those more demanding games like the original Forza Horizon, yeah, still play at full speed at 15 watts. Now, Nintendo Switch is a little bit different of a beast. Usually for this one, I will set it to like a 22 or 25 watt TDP. And then the emulator itself does a pretty good job of kind of ratcheting it back to just give it as much as it needs. Now, when I'm forcing on a 15 watt TDP, it's going to have mixed results. For example, more middleweight and lightweight games, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, these are going to play fine. But as you start working your way up to the harder to play games like Super Mario Odyssey, it's not going to get a full frame rate. Now, it's not a bad experience. I would say the average was about 53 or 54 frames per second. So I would still call this playable, but there are going to be some games that will have some slowdown. So if anything, I would say that at this 15 watt TDP, Nintendo Switch emulation is not going to be flawless. And also just to kind of temper those expectations in terms of battery life, we're looking at about an hour and 50 minutes at a 15 watt TDP. So this is definitely not something that you could play all day. Okay, so with that testing out of the way, let's go ahead and start wrapping up and talk about what I like and what I don't like about the GPD Win Mini. Number one, the biggest draw by far is that it's super compact. I know there are a lot of people who really want to have a clamshell handheld PC. In fact, GPD has made them before. And so as a result, I know there are fans out there. And yeah, it's really impressive how small this device can get when you close it up. I also think it's a nice display. It is 7 inches with a 1080p resolution, which I think is just about perfect for this chipset. I also think that the quality of the controls themselves is pretty high. For example, I love the D-pad and face buttons. They feel really great and they're a perfect fit for a clamshell like this. And finally, I do like the 7840U performance. Now, I've never tested a 7640U, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work. And also bear in mind that there is a back order right now for 7840U chipsets, and so as a result, GPD thinks it's going to be about a two-month delay. So in that regard, I'm not really sure if I can recommend the 7640U because I haven't tested it, but at least in my review unit, yes, I'm impressed with the 7840U's performance around that 15-watt TDP. Now, you knew this was coming, but there are things I don't like about the Win Mini, so let's talk about those. From a controls perspective, I found that the recessed analogs did prevent me from enjoying this device as much as I would like. 
A prime example is when playing analog stick centric games like first person shooters. Another thing that I wasn't super happy with are the ergonomics of this device. It just kind of comes hand in hand with a clamshell. This one has a bit of a squarish design and also doesn't really have any sort of grip on the back. And so when it comes down to it, if I have to choose between basically any other handheld that has some sort of grip to it, I would probably prefer that over the Win Mini. I also found that I wasn't super impressed with the typing experience. When trying to use the Win Mini like a laptop, I think it's just a little bit too small. These keys are too cramped to actually be able to use with a home row. And so if anything, I think it's handy when you just need to type in something really quickly, but other than that, it's not really great. Additionally, the device is pretty power hungry. I found that it required a lot more power than I was expecting, even at like a 15 watt TDP. And so as a result, I think the battery life was a little bit worse than I was expecting. I would say if you're going to be playing lightweight games, you're probably going to get three to four hours. But if you want to push it to the ideal power profile of 15 watts, you are looking at under two hours of battery life. And finally, the last point here does have a question mark attached to it because they are working on it. But all the same, I can't ignore the ambient heat issues that come from playing the Win Mini. In the most rudimentary sense, it does prevent me from pushing the power profile on this device. And so as a result, we are leaving performance on the table. Not only that, it feels like GPD is trying to combat that by maxing out the TDP to only 18 watts. And this is a chipset that can do far more than that. And so as a result, when you start to put it all together, it does feel like there are quite a bit of compromises when it comes to the Win Mini. Yes, you're getting something that has this really compact form factor, but at what cost? After spending about two weeks with this device and trying my best to find different ways to love it, I found that I just really couldn't. Instead, it almost felt like the GPD Win Mini is in a lose-lose scenario. Yes, it can function as kind of like a small laptop, but if you wanted to have a small laptop experience that was actually enjoyable, then instead I would recommend the GPD Win Max 2 as your best choice. This one is also compact and small, especially from a laptop kind of standpoint, but it's just big enough to be able to actually use in a practical sense and enjoy it. On the other end of the spectrum, yes, the Win Mini can also function as a handheld. But again, if you're looking for something that's more handheld friendly, I would recommend a different GPD device. I think the GPD Win 4 is a better device overall when it comes to something that's at least more handheld friendly. And it's kind of the best of both worlds in the sense that it has that slide up screen so you can access the keyboard as well. And this keyboard's just as good as the one on the Win Mini. It has all those same shortcuts and functions. So in summary, as I thought about all the things that GPD did in order to make this even physically possible, I was really impressed with the GPD Win Mini and all that it can do in this form factor. However, even though GPD was able to pull off this device, making something so small and so powerful, it also feels like they flew a little bit too close to the sun. By that, I mean they just kind of pushed it a little bit too far to the point where I don't really see the point of this device. And in a more literal sense, it does feel like they flew too close to the sun in the fact that it gets very warm. As a result, I'm super impressed with the engineering feat of making the GPD Win Mini. It almost feels like they're defying the law of physics. But in the end, even though I am very impressed by the device and the engineering it required to make it in the first place, I just don't really see it as being a viable option, at least for my own personal use case. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. What did I miss about the GPD Win Mini that makes it so special? After all, there are over 900 people who have already pre-ordered this device. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.